What's going on? It's Mr. Gustin. We're doing chemistry today. Today we're talking about nuclear decay. We talked about where atoms come from. They collide, their nuclei collide together. They make heavier and heavier elements in stars and in supernova. But every now and then we get these nuclei that are too heavy. They are unstable. We call them radioactive. And in order for them to become stable, they undergo what's called nuclear decay. They go from unstable to a more stable isotope, a more stable nucleus, where the number of protons and neutrons match a specific special ratio that keeps the nucleus happy and energetically favorable. Now, we're going to study three types of decay. We have alpha, beta, and gamma decay. And right now, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six different nuclear equations, nuclear processes taking place. And our job is to figure out is it alpha, beta, or gamma, and what happens to uh, or when we have alpha, beta, gamma decay. Here we go. The first one says alpha decay is when there's a loss of two protons and a loss of four uh, mass particles. So I see this here, and I see this is radon 88. I see helium right here being emitted. And then I see, uh, I'm sorry, this is radium, and this is radon uh, 222. So alpha particles are these particles right here. These helium nuclei are alpha particles. So we can call this alpha. We can call this a helium nucleus. That's what these are, OK? When a helium nucleus is emitted from the inside of an other atoms or an isotope's nucleus, we call it alpha decay. And it's usually associated with gamma or some other kind of radiation. If we skip down to the bottom, we see that uh, gamma particles or gamma radiation is not at all a mass carrying particle. And that should make sense to us. We discussed gamma as some type of radiation, like a light. Light does not have a mass, so gamma radiation should not have a mass. It is just a high frequency, high energy photon. So with gamma, we see no change in mass at all. Gamma is just a release of energy that is associated with other kinds of decay, but it is not a mass-carrying decay. Let's look at beta. Beta particles right here are these interesting particles here. They look like electrons, but not exactly what they are. If we think about a nucleus, inside nucleus we have protons and neutrons. And neutrons, believe it or not, are made up of charge carriers. Every neutron contains a positive charge carrier and a negative charge carrier. So beta decay is essentially a neutron spitting out its negative charge carrier. When it spits out its negative charge carrier, we no longer have a neutron, but what's left is a positively charged proton in the nucleus. We haven't changed the mass of the nucleus. It's still the same mass, but now we've changed the identity of the isotope because it goes to a, uh, a new number of protons. The number of protons defines the atom. So beta decay, we see a gain in one proton, but we see no change in mass. The number of massive particles does not change, but the identity of those particles change, okay? And we can see other types of patterns happening here. Here's a helium process where polonium-214 releases an alpha particle and now becomes lead-210. The same thing happens down here. We see a beta, an alpha particle release. We go from 148 to 144. We're kind of tracking these changes here, okay? Let's go ahead and do some practice now with this type of decay. There are notes in the slides. We can go ahead and write all of these down. That's fantastic. But I want to get to the practice. I want to get to some practice problems. So here we go. OK, over here, we have some practice problems. We're going to be asking you to identify various types of decay. And I go ahead, on every assessment, I'm going to give you the types of decay and the particles that decay, uh, that, that are a part of decay. So I, I, you don't need to memorize those that are given to you. I just want to make sure you know they're not fractions. I just can't get them into my slides without making them fractions. So they're there. OK? First things first, let's state whether each of the following is alpha, beta, or gamma. This should be pretty straightforward. I'm just looking for the alpha particle, the beta particle, or a gamma radiation. So I looked at number one first. I've identified right here a helium particle. Well, that's alpha. And at number two, I've identified right here uh, a negative charge carrier. Well, that's beta. And over here, even though it's hydrogen and helium in the uh, decay itself, 
I identify a beta particle, so there we go. I've identified alpha, beta, beta for one, two, three. That's pretty darn straight forward. Let's try the next one. For five through nine, you're going to need a periodic table. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my uh, trusty periodic table out. Make sure you've got one near you. Number one, I've got tungsten 184. It undergoes alpha. So I'm gonna kind of write alpha over the top of this thing. These markers stink. Uh, but that way I know is what's happening. So tungsten spits out an alpha particle, which means it's going to lose a mass of 4. So it goes to 180 mass particles, or average or it's atomic mass. And it spits out two protons, which means the atomic number goes from 74 to 72. And element 72 is hafnium. So I'm going to call this daughter isotope hafnium 180. There is my answer. I'm just keeping track of particles. Let's go ahead and look at number five. Number five doesn't tell me what happens. It tells me the daughter isotope and the parent isotope. And so I go from lead to 10 to mercury 206. That's interesting. I see a difference of four there, which is kind of indicating which of these has a mass difference of four. It's alpha decay. So I'm going to guess that this is alpha decay. I'm going to write down the alpha particle and then go back and check my work. Uh, lead 210 loses four mass particles, becomes 206. It also loses two protons to become 80. Bam, this is alpha decay. Let's skip across over here now to uh, number seven. Number seven, I've got carbon 14. It says it undergoes beta decay. Beta decay spits out a negative charge carrier. So I'm thinking to myself, I'm going across the bottom here. This has six protons, and it has seven, eight neutrons, but it spits out a negative from one neutron, which means I've got an additional proton. This makes this seven protons down here. I still have 14 mass particles, and now I'm going to use my periodic table to go find where is element number seven. There it is. It's nitrogen. This becomes nitrogen 14. Let's look at number eight. Number eight, I see that there's a change in protons, but there's no change in number of mass-carrying particles. That means I'm probably looking at beta decay. Let's go ahead and put our negative one for our charge carrier. We'll put a beta particle, I'm sorry, yeah, beta particle like this, beta right here, and then we'll go check it out. I've got 16 protons, but a negative charge carrier is emitted from a neutron, which is gonna increase my protons by one. I go from 16 to 17 protons. We've got chlorine 35. Folks, this is how we do uh, nuclear decay series and nuclear decay problems with alpha, beta, and gamma. As always, if you have questions, you drop in the comments, you send me an email, you ask me in class. Until next time, see ya!